Hello everyone. This is Rufus Dayas Sagran, working as an assistant professor in Don Bosco College, Ehrlegree Hills. So today, we are going to see a much more interesting topic which deals about American culture and tradition. In that particular American culture and tradition, we are going to see Mexican culture and their tradition and the origin of European American culture and uh, what is the history behind it, who are the people responsible for it. So through this aspect, we are going to deal the topic called Malanche or Malanque by Laura Escobar. So initially, I want to put a synopsis here. So in this entire topic, we are going to deal about the about the author and second, a short summary about it and the background story of it and who is this Malanche or Malanelli in this point in this story we used to call her or who is she? Is she a traitor or is she a martyr or is she a heroine? So in this aspect, we are going to deal the entire topic. Yeah, next slide. First, let me discuss about the author, who is Laura Escobar. She is a Mexican writer and Mexican popular author who was born in 1950. And she is known for her imaginative storytelling with mixture of magical realism, folklore and everyday life in our work. So magical realism. So what is this magical realism? Magical realism is a simple concept where we are implementing or imposing the magical or fantastic fantasy elements in the realistic world that is called magical realism for an example let i say life of pi charlie and the chocolate factory these are some of the examples for this magical realism so she became famous in 1989 by publishing a first novel called like water for chocolate so this story consists of romance and magical realism it's a blender of both the things and her writing style would be filled with some minute sensory details of Mexican and American Mexican culture and tradition, and which reflects the underlying, underprivileged or the lowest standard people's culture and tradition and the highest standard people's culture and tradition. So she has published n number of novels, plays, screenplays, and children's books, which explores the themes called love and family. So most of the most of her work which consists of which relates the human relationship and human emotions of Mexican people how they tackle a particular situation how they've seen a particular situation and how the problems has been handled by the Mexican people so she has inspired the readers worldwide with her captivating stories rooted in Mexican heritage so now we, I'm putting here a short summary about the entire Malanque story so Malanque is a historical novel by Laura Escobar which tells a story about Malanali or Malanki we used to call her and she is a person from a Nahua tribe which belongs to an indigenous tribe from Mexican country. So she, she, she played a pivotal role as a translator and intermediary during the Spanish conquest of Mexico. She was an intermediator for both the Mexican people and Spanish people. So this entire novel which revolves around the particular character called Malanche, she was the main character and the protagonist of this entire novel. So this novel explores Malanke's life from her childhood to her involvement with Aaron Cortes and Aztec Empire. So through this vivid storytelling, so Escobar delves the themes called portrayal, power, betrayal and cultural identity and often sheds lights over the life and history and cultures of indigenous people. Indigenous people means a tribal people belongs to a particular country. So this Malanke's complex role in the conquest of her legacy as a symbol of cultural hybridity and survival. So in this entire story, they portrayed Malanke as a mother of a new race or who coined the term or who coined the first uh, new race or who termed the first new race called Mestizos, a mixture of European and American child. So she made a culture to be a hybrid in the entire Mexican civilization and survival or central of the novel's exploration of identity and agency in the face of colonialism. As I said, who is this Malinani? Is she a traitor? Is she a martyr? Or is she a heroine? So we are going to see the assumption and the clearest way of who seen Malinani as a traitor, martyr or a heroine. Here, let me first detailly explain who is this Malinani. So Malinani is a girl from belongs to a Nahua tribe. So when she was 12, his father has passed away. Later, her mother and her stepfather sold her to a slavery in order to claim the property of her father with the help of his stepbrother, Malanchi's stepbrother, uh, who have the right, proper right to reclaim the property of her father. So in order to reclaim the property, so they sold Malanchi to a merchant as a slave. 
So Malin Kay knows uh, several other languages. So he was well versed in language skills and she was later discovered by Spanish conquistadors. What is this conquistadors? Conquistadors is nothing but people who are conquering or going to conquer a particular place who come from another place or called as conquistadors. So Spanish came from Spain and they con going to conquer the Aztec Empire or Mexican Empire city. So they encountered this Malin Ali and by seeing the language skill that she has, so they bought her. So later they used her as an ally in order to capture the entire Aztec Empire. Okay, and then Cortes realized that Malin Ali could talk with emissaries. He promised her more than liberty. So he pro by knowing that she knows more other languages, she thought th they thought that she okay, we'll give some freedom to us. Let her be our own. So through her, we get to know about the entire Aztec Empire and get to know the people who hate the Aztec Empire. Empire. So through them, we just collect some allies and we just collect some people to battle this Aztec Empire. Then, from then on, Malanqui worked with Aguila. Aguila is a person who helps to bridge communication between the Spaniards and Nahua. So she helped the people to conquer her own world, own land. So later, she gave birth to the Cortes' son and the child has been taken away. She then she is married to someone else, they started fall in love. So after she thought that this Aztec empire being so cruel by sacrificing human to conduct some rituals. So in order to uh, save, in order to save her from the same of people, she thought this Spanish people would help her to save her own people. But later her own people framed them, framed her as a traitor who betrayed her own country. So later. Cortes and Malanke fell in love, so they gave birth to a new son called Martin. So that child has been taken away and then she got married to another person called Juan Jaramillo who is a Spanish Hidalgo. So what is a Spanish Hidalgo? Spanish Hidalgo is nothing but a person who is of lower standard below to the knight and the soldiers of the country. So some contemporary scholars have estimated that she dies less than a decade after the conquest of Mexican country or the Aztec Empire at some point after, uh, before February 1529. So she was died between the Feb in the month of February in 1529. So here we are going to see the assumption or the perception of the feminist writers and some theorists over this Malanqui, who the Malanqui, the real Malanqui is. So some feminist intervene says that she is a mother of a new race. So she adopted some symbolism, a duality and complex identity. Here she belongs to a Mexican culture. Here uh, her husband Cortes was belongs to a Spanish culture. So both of them fell in love. They formed relationship and they gave birth to a new son called Martin. So he started a new race called Mestizos. Mestizos means a European, blender of European and American uh, people. So this was the first child, they, this was the first cultural hybridity where they formed a new race. So later some Theorists say, some feminist theorists say, she is not a traitor but she is a victim because she has been used by the Spanish conquistadors or Heron Cortes. She, he used her to capture the Aztec Empire but later they framed, Mexican people framed her as a traitor by betraying their own country. So Mexican feminists defended that Malan Kelly was as a woman caught between cultures because she belongs to Mexican culture and he belongs to Spanish culture. So she was forced to make complex decision who ultimately served as a mother of new race. So even though she married a Spanish guy, she, she supported the Mexican culture only because she believed and she thought that we have to free our, our own people from the cruelty of Aztec Empire Montezuma. Okay. So she wants to free, her, free them but later she was framed as a traitor here. And some historical perception says Malankari is a complex and various depending on cultural and historical interpretation. In traditional Mexican folklore and pop culture, popular culture, Malankari is often depicted as a traitor or betrayer of her own people, symbolizing the perceived betrayal of indigenous culture and identity in the face of Spanish colonization. Even though she belongs to uh, she was comes under the Spanish uh, it was though she was married to a Spanish guy, she doesn't subsides her, she doesn't put her down to the Spanish culture but still even though she's beside the Spanish culture she full and full supported the Mexican culture only to get rid of uh, Aztec Empire she thought to save the entire people from Aztec Empire so but later she framed as a betrayer however some contemporary scholars have offered more nuanced interpretation of Malankali's role 
recognizing her agency and the complexities of her situation. Here she faces so many complexities because though she married to a Spanish guy, she has faced some Spanish issues. So here though he, ma he was an intermediate for the Mexican people and the Spanish people, some Mexican people criticized her because she was helping out them. But she thought that this Spanish guy would help her to reclaim the, her own people. But later it has been turned upside down. Okay. Some argue that she acted off self-preservation and survival in the tumultuous and dangerous time. So they, she, thought, she thought that she wants to be very much cautious while helping these people because it, at certain time it will be, a, a, it will be a some terminal situation or some survival of the fittest situation for her. So when others emphasize her contribution as a cultural mediator and interpreters of indigenous and Spanish culture. Today, even today, the Mexican Spanish the word Malanchismo and Malanchista are used to denounce Mexicans who are perceived as denying their own cultural heritage by preferring foreign cultural tradition. Even the people who are adapting themselves to the foreign cultural tradition, even the own Mexican people, Mexican Spanish people who are neglecting, who are denouncing their own Mexican culture and started to follow the foreign cultures expressions or adapting themselves to the other foreign cultures, those people are termed as Malanchismo or Malanchista. Yeah. So here we have been comparing the life of the comparing the life of Adam and Eve, a mythological characters, to the to the character called Heron Cortes and uh, Malanchi. Why we are comparing Adam and Eve to Heron Cortes and Malanchi? Adam and Eve they betrayed God, they fell into the sin. Here Heron Cortes and Malanchi, Malanchi betrayed her own people and he helped to fall the Aztec Empire. Here she helped people to f make the Aztec Empire to fall under the ground and the Spanish conquistadors captured the entire Aztec Empire. So they were comparing these two characters and they naming it as Adam and Eve of Mestizo culture. What is this Mestizo culture? Mestizo culture is nothing but a child who was born from a Spanish and a Mexican pe Mexican women is called as Mestizo, Mestizo culture or Mestizo child. Or is, you know, put it in a simple way, it, it used to be termed as a uh, European and American child. Okay. So here, they have told this entire novel with the lyricism of the Nahutal song tradition and pictorial language. She gives us a creation of myth of the new world, hybrid culture and a legendary affair. Next slide. So now we move on to the background of the country. Here, till now, till date, Malankli remains a controversial and enigmatic figure in the entire Mexican history. So in Mexican today, her, her name has been symbolized as an essence of treachery and betrayal. In nearly five centuries has been passed, but still the people are hating her and still they are posting her as a national Judas. So in a country with more sensitive than most when it comes to the subject of its freedom, uh, liberty or sovereignty, Malanchismo is a term applied to the everything seen as injurious to the Mexican patriotism, honor and national pride. So now we move to the plot. So here, as I've told you, she was born. She was born under the guidance of father and mother. At the age of twelve, his father has been passed away, and she was sold to slavery. Later, Heron Quarters bought her, and she come to know. And he come to know that she was very much well versed in so many languages. So here, the story continues. So Malinali was the mediator between two cultures. One is Hispanic and Native American. So Hispanic is a Spanish culture, and Native American is an American culture. And she was very much well versed in three languages. One is Spanish and another one is Mayan and Nahutal. She was also a slave trying to rebel against the barbarous culture of her masters, the Aztecs conqueror Montezuma. So this guy Montezuma, she, he, was a, he was a guy of Mesoamerican civilization, was a conqueror. She was very much cruel in treating the people. So often conducts some ritual, her human sacrifice to build up his own kingdom. So in order to save her people, she thought she was trying to free the entire people of her own kingdom but later she fell into the uh, into the victim of the entire entire story so but her loyalty was to her own people but whom she was trying to set free malinali views the world as a world that needed to be changed and be rid of human sacrifices while heron quarters catholic worldview sees the conquest of aztec empire as a way to find gold and other riches so here shmanankari sees that Everyone has their own perception towards the world. Here she thought to take away, free her own people, but later she fell into a term called traitor. With, with the help of Heron Quarters, Heron Quarters 
sees his entire Aztec empire a very much rich and very goal-filled country. We must conquer. With that mentality, she seeks the help of Malanchi. But Malanchi doesn't know she was uh, in a relationship with this intention. So later when she comes to know, she just breaks up with him and she moves on. So they come from a different land wherein they have their own beliefs, traditions and culture. But honestly, we would take Malanchi's side because it is more justifiable and accurate. Because every people or every country people has their own traditions and their own culture. Heron Quarters, he belongs to Spanish. He has his own Spanish culture and tradition. And Malanqui, she belongs to Mexican tradition and Mexican culture. So she follows her own tradition and culture. Even though they got attached, they got into a relationship, she resides in Mexican culture. She doesn't follow the Spanish culture. She doesn't betray her own country. But here, the theorist says, we must honestly sub, sub, submit ourselves to the Malanese side because it was, she was more justifiable and accurate in following Mexican culture. So defining the world as different definitions in the eyes of different people. You can't say that his words are wrong because we define the world as what we see and what we observe. Everyone has their own perception in seeing the world. Okay, Even you and me has our own perception and our own view of seeing the world. So seeing a world, we must create a definition in order to view the world in what we see, in what we observe, what we analyze through it. So here, Malanali came as a mistress to Cortes and gave birth to his first son called Martin, who is considered as one of the first mestizos. As I have told you, mestizos is a people of mixed European and indigenous American ancestry. So because of Malanali's own perspective, they thought that Malanali, Malanali was she's doing some through going through. For the Spaniards, she's an ally, but for the people living at home, she become a traitor here. So Malanqui is a fact that natives refer to both her and Cortes by the name Malanqui. So it is believed that Malanqui was derived from Malan, a part of Malan Ali, and she is a title of honor. So in, 19, in 1521, after a huge battle, Cortes captured this Aztec empire and put an end to the Mexican rules. Okay, And she started to begin the Spanish dominion in Mexican country. So Cortes subsequently served as the governor of New Spain and played a key role in Spanish colonization of the region. Later, Cortes started to show his valiant power, its cruelty, its monstrous way of behaving in the entire kingdom. So she, he showed that uh, he exploited the entire country. He imposed some cruel rule and Spanish rule and some Christianity in Mexican country. And Cortes often faced some criticism and opposition from both his Spanish contemporaries and later historians for his ruthless, ruthless tactics and treatment of the indigenous population. Finally, Malanali breaks up with him when he requires her to abandon their son in the same way her mother abandoned her. After Cortes married her off to his captain called Juan Jaramillo, a Spanish Hidalgo, and she ends up living a happy life with him and dying a happy death at one with gods. That's it. So the palace of Felucian, it's by Chitra Banerjee Divakurani. Okay. So this palace of Felucian is related to the some mythological stories of our Indian culture. Okay. So this speaks about the Pandavas, the Panjalis, Tragubadi and Karna. So this uh, Indian, Indian tradition, Indian mythological characters, we are going to deal with it. So this was written by author called Chitra Banerjee Divakurani. So, Titra Banerjee Divakurani is, a, is an Indian author who was born in Kolkata in India in 1956. She is a prolific author known for a captivating storytelling and rich exploration of themes like culture, identity and immigrant experiences. Why she was speaking about this immigrant experience and identity? Because she was born in Kolkata but settled in America. While she was going as, as an Indian American citizen, she faced lots and lots of issues uh, by facing the American people. Though she was immigrant, there were lots and lots of issues that she has faced as an immigrant and uh, being born in India, uh, she was lower in, I mean, uh, lower in color. She has faced some racism problem over there. So that's why, what are the experience that she has gained through this American culture and tradi identity, she has exposed that in, this, in her own writing. So from an early age, she was very much impressed in the vibrant tapestry of Indian mythology, folklore and storytelling which would later influence her writing. Her early works often grappled with themes of displacement, identity and the immigrant experience, drawing from her own struggles and triumphs in adapting to a new culture. Though she was born in India, she faced lots and lots of struggles as an immigrant in America by adapting to the culture, adapting to the tradition, adapting to the identity of the American people. So Diva Karani's literary career began to flourish in the 1990s with the publication of her first novel, 
uh, first collection of short stories called Arranged Marriage, which garnered critical acclaim and established her as a distinctive voice in contemporary fiction. So here I am moving on to the story. Before moving on to the story, let me see the characters who are involved in the entire story. Okay, first one is Dragupadi or Panjali, the main protagonist born from fire and destined to play a pivotal role in this Mahamarada and she is the wife of the Pandavas and a central figure in the epic. So next, Yudhisthira, the eldest of Pandava brothers and Dragupadi's husband. He is known for his righteousness and adherence to the Dharma. Next, Bhima, the second Pandava brother known for his immense strength and valor. Next, Arjuna, the third Pandava brother and a skilled archer. We all know about Arjuna, right? So he is renowned for his bravery and skill in warfare. Then, Nakula and Sakadeva, they both are twin brothers who was born 4th and 5th of the Pandavas respectively. They are skilled warriors and loyal to their brothers. So now we move to the Lord Krishna, a central figure in the Hindu mythology. Krishna is a friend and advisor to the Pandavas. His wisdom and guidance play a crucial role in the events of the Mahabharata. So now Duryodhana, the eldest of the Gaurava brothers and the chief antagonist in the Mahabharata. He is driven by jealousy and ambition leading to the conflict with the Pandavas. Last, Karna, you all know Karna, right? So Karna, a key character in the Mahabharata, Karna is raised as the son of the charioteer but is later revealed to be the eldest of Pandava brother born to a Kunti through the sun god Sun Surya. He is known for his loyalty, valor and tragic fate and he was known for his metal body which covers, her, covers him from the death. So first, who is this Dragubadi? So Dragubadi is a daughter of Dragubada of Panjala country whose father has grudge over Drona, the teacher of both Pandavas and Gauravas. So due to some clashes in the past or grievances in the past, she, he wants to seek revenge Drona. So she, she conducts some rituals, sacrificial rituals to gain a son who would be more and more powerful enough to defeat Draguna. But as a result of Yajana, that instead of son, he gave birth to a daughter from a sacrificial fire called Thragubadi or Panjala. And some oracle, some astrologers predicts that she will be the cause of the great destruction in the entire Pandava dynasty. Okay? Dragubada unsure of how to handle this prophecy but raises Dragubadi without the intention of using her as a tool to fulfill his own ambition to take revenge Drohana. Okay? Then Dragubadi is marked by an exceptional beauty, intelligence and fiery spirit. She was raised by her father in the palace and she is groomed for a life of royalty and her fate takes an unexpected turn by marrying five Pandava brothers as a part of political alliance. So now we move to a short summary of it. So this short story deeply relevant to today's war tone world, the palace of illusion takes us back to the time of Indian epic Mahabharata, a time that is half history and half myth and whole magical. We don't know that this Mahabharata has exactly happened in a realistic world, but some people claim that it has been happened, some people doesn't. So some people say that it's a mixture of fictional work, like it's half history and some, some people have incorporated some magical elements here and some mythological characters here. So this palace of elements, this palace of illusions traces the princess Panjali's life beginning with a birth in fire and following a spirited balancing act as a woman with five Pandava brothers or his five, five husbands who have been cheated out for their own kingdom. So she has been sent out from her own kingdom to reclaim her birthright, to reclaim the throne of his father. She with the help of five husbands, Pandava brothers, she made a huge war between uh, Gauravas and Pandavas and Karna and his, uh, with his father, there was a huge destruction caused and there was huge life has been wasted in the whole entire war. So Panjali is swept into the quest to reclaim the birthright, remaining at the side through years of exile and terrible civil war involving all the important kings of India. Meanwhile, we never lose of a strategic duels with mother and law or complicated friendship with the enigmatic Lord Krishna. We don't know that maybe he might be a advisor to Panjali or else he or he might be a secret attraction or secret lover to the mist to the Panjali. We doesn't know that. But they claim that she has a secret attraction to the mysterious man who is her husband. So who is one of her husbands. So most dangerous and also the most dangerous enemy in there. So Panjali is a fiery female redefining for us a world of warriors, gods and the ever manipulating ends of fate. At last we see the themes of it. The, this palace of illusion covers up the themes called women's discrimination, their struggles, identity, male dominance, unique female perspectives and the position of women during the period of Mahabharata, 
the humiliation faced by Panjali and that went through is given by as the challenges of life. Here, along, apart from the plain themes like struggles, identity and discrimination, we see this particular story in a feminist perspective where a single-handedly Panjali encountered all the wars and also the great dis she created a great destruction in the entire in Indian war career and then she was also dominated so many men in the in her entire life and she though she was married to five husbands she controlled five husbands and these five husbands obeyed what Panjali said and also it has been said in the perspectives of Panjali how Panjali has seen this entire st story and how she has behaved the entire context yeah that's all for today's class thank you